Hello, and welcome to Anne's Ceramics. We're back in my workshop today, and today we're going to work with the intense translucence, and we're going to do this sky area. One thing that's really important when working with this, with the with the sapphire, the 7-Eleven sapphire, is that it is a very strong color. So when you're wanting to just a shadowing of the blue, you want to mix just a touch of it with some white to kind of tone it down. But we're going to start out with this, and we've got some clouds over here that we're also going to deal with. And I'm going to just pick up a little bit of the blue, and I'm going to touch it into the white, and I'm going to tone it down just a little bit on my tablet. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start putting this in. And you can already tell if you can got anything, you can see how strong that is. I've got it way too strong. So I'm going to clean my brush out and come back, pick up some more white, and come along and white this down, tone it down going to bring that blue over and put it in another area. And I'm kind of just working down, working down into those areas. And over here I've got some clouds and I don't want that blue mixed in with the clouds too much. Now I've got the color of blue that I want. So I'm just going to kind of go around them. And you can tell what not to do because I got the first part of this really, really dark. And I'm going to come along with some more white. And I'm going to white that down a little bit more. And this is the 700 white. It's still in the intense translucence. One of the nice things about working with the translucence is that they don't, they stay open for a long time. In fact, they really never cure until you spray them or apply some type of a sealer on them. While I've been working at this this morning, painting this piece, I've had three telephone calls, a, re a repairman on my air conditioner, and I've stopped and done that. I haven't cleaned a brush, haven't put my stuff up, just left it out and left it open, come back into it, and it's still quite usable. So I'm going to put this down for right now, and I'm going to pick up a dry Q-tip. So I want to get down into these areas right in here and kind of pull this, start pulling this blue away from it. And you can wet this. You can't see this, but right here I've got a big dry sponge. And I set that there, and any time I go to water with my brush or a Q-tip, I touch it to that, and that pulls all the excess moisture out of that, whatever you've got. So we've got a really nice blue sky going here. And this lets me work around the detail of my piece without getting smeared it. And a lot of times when you work with a towel or um, a rag, you'll actually smear it onto the piece of, the rest of the piece that you've already got painted or got something done with. And the next thing that we kind of want to do with this sky is that we want to uh, give it different intensities. So we're going to pick up a little bit of the antiquing medium. And again, we're going to kind of wave this in the air and let it dry for a little bit so we don't keep it too. And then I'm going to start pulling that blue back off again. The antique medium will dry out of this really fast, so you just have to give it a few seconds to to get to where you can use it without overpowering and pulling too much off. Okay, so I think I'm going to get another Q-tip get down in here, pull just a little bit more off of it, then I'm going to come over to my palette, I've got some 712, uh, 713 primrose on my palette, I'm going to pick just a little bit up with that Q-tip, 
And while this is still kind of wet, I'm just going to kind of move it around because I'm on a little bit of shadowing. I got way too much. I'll start pulling it off. There it goes. Just a little variation in color to go along with the blue. A little bit of sapphire. That's a little bit of primrose here, there, and yonder. You can kind of tell, maybe a little bit, about working with it. The translucents are really fun to work with. They're easy to work with. Uh, but by the same token, they take a little bit of extra time and trouble to learn uh, the colors and what to do with them. Come along with these clouds. I'm going to put some more white on them. This is the 700 translucent white that I'm working with. And the same brush that I've got this white in, but I've got a little bit where I don't want it. Tip. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up a little bit of amethyst and I'm going to mix that in on my palette so that it gets down pretty thick, pretty light. Don't want it too strong like I did with the blue. And I'm just going to kind of shadow in a little bit here, there, and yonder. You just barely can see it. It gives our clouds a little bit of depth and distinction. So, then I hope you can see that. Okay, what I've done with that, and all the painting directions will be online. Uh, we've written them, uh, changed them around a little bit. Uh, the next thing that you're gonna, we're going to do on this one is the grass. This is a big area. I've been working with a small area, but this is kind of a big area. So. Uh, I'll be working with that next and the flowers and everything. But that gives you uh, working with the blue, which is really difficult. And that gives you a little bit of instructions on how to do skies and things. This is one that's turned a little bit dark. Here's one I did earlier that's a lot lighter. And this is just mixing more white into it. And it depends upon the intensity that you want in your blue, how you're going to do it. So have fun painting. Again, this is $31.50. The, it's a candle holder or a planner. If you're going to do a candle holder out of it, I'm going to paint the inside of this with the metallic gold and the bottom. If you were going to make a planner out of it, you would want to glaze the inside. If you don't have a kiln for glazing, you can order this piece glazed and ready to paint. So happy painting, and we'll see you on another date.